or morality or whatever you call it. When I started um, um, researching peer-to-peer -peer networks, I quickly discovered that we can build networks that can't be turned off. I can't even turn off my own network. So once it's out there, it will run as long as there's at least two users still using it forever. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's compatible with the existing internet, of course. <coughs> and we can easily make it anonymous, so no one can know what, who do, does what. Anyone can read anything, anyone can publish anything anonymously. That means it becomes a network that is free for all to do anything. Uh, which means, for instance, terrorists can communicate, people can publish anything, and you can get lots and lots of free child pornography. And actually, I2P is full of child pornography. It just takes you and search in the network and get any amount of videos and pictures of child pornography. So I realized I had to investigate the ethics of this because twice before in my life, my inventions, uh, people tried to use them for bad things. The military wanted to build stuff and sell to dictators, what I invented. Um, the security in car stuff for tanks and also the protocol, the micro IP that I not just invented and designed it. And it's lightweight internet for nodes inside cars and factories and stuff like that. And as usual, after some months, the military asked, ah, we could use this in our guns and stuff. Could you help us with that? And I, nope. Because I know where you sell that. Sweden, export, Sweden is the biggest exporter in the world of weapons. Do you know that? Yes. And that's kind of per capita, per person. So, for instance, France and Russia and the US export more weapons, but compared to the population, we are the biggest exporter. And Gothenburg alone, it has one, half a million inhabitants. 10,000 people or so in Gothenburg works with weapons. Wow. Uh, it's uh, the whole valley where I used to work, our, our kind of Silicon Valley in Gothenburg. Most of the companies that are on the side also do weapons electronics and weapons software. So they don't do much hardware in Gothenburg. The hardware is done up uh, in the middle of Sweden, but, uh, the guns and stuff and missiles. But the, all the software for those systems are part of made in Gothenburg. Also the radars, the military radars are done in Gothenburg. Oh, by the way, that's perhaps interesting for you guys. Do you know that since mid-90s, the Swedish radars that we export, Ericsson radars, can see stealth bombers? No problem at all. <laughs> since you're geese, you will understand it easily. Mm -hmm. uh, in Saudi Arabia, for instance, now they built full 3G coverage with 3G antennas in deserts where no human has set foot for 40 years. That's but it's cool. complete coverage. You had high-speed internet in the middle of that <laughs> desert. Mm -hmm. Must be for wildlife, so you can see where all the snakes are. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nice and easy to just use some basic GSM yeah, coverage like if someone stumbles out in there. Yeah. Yeah. Camelette camel or something. Camelette, <laughs> camel exactly. I like yeah. that. If camel it were just for, 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 uh, for, for safety, they could just put some simple GSM antennas so we could call for rescue if you stumble into that camel. desert, but that's not why it's that. Camels like rock and everyone knows yeah. that. <laughs> Actually, it works like this. This is the so, guy. So, cyber nomads on camels would actually be a pretty viable, camels in solo would be pretty viable. So that might work, you might get away with that with one hump camels, but two hump camels would like at least LTE, if not wild. <laughs> <laughs> Three home camels wired, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Here you have your stealth bomber. I can, well, it doesn't look much more like that from the front. As you know, the stealth bombers have a flat underside. So if this was a radar antenna, the radar beam would bounce away. So you wouldn't get an echo back. That's one of the methods you use. echo somewhere else. Yeah, to somewhere else. And of course, they also painted with uh, uh, paint that doesn't reflect as well. And they have to change that paint every week or something like that, every month. It wears off really quickly. Uh, like the modern um, fighter planes, I don't know what the name of the modern one, they don't use these shapes as much, they use the new paint because they've got better paint. But they have to up and you change the paint, it's ridiculous expensive paint. That's why Norway now, they are going to buy that kind of a fighter plane, but they are not sure they are, uh, can afford to repaint them every week, so they won't be stealthy anyway, <laughs> or something like that. Just to find them once a month and the ground. Yeah. But anyway, this is the basic, for, for the old, old kind of, um, the B2B and the other smaller one, but I don't remember the first one. Uh, but if you cover the terrain with antennas, for instance 3G antennas, there will be incoming beams from all directions, and you, then you put a listening station, some of them spread out, 
And for instance, oh, there might be a listening station down there. Then you see them, no problem. Mm -hmm. So Ericsson, that makes, well, used to make mobile phones, but they still use, make the base stations and military radar. Of course, you buy 3G, 3G and 4G from them and listening stations and cover the desert and you see them, no problem. <coughs> And they have done that since the mid 90s. Hmm. So now you know why some countries really, the governments really, really want to have full 4G or 3G coverage in weird places. Hmm. It's the same in Sweden. In the middle of the mountains in northwest Sweden, sure, people go hiking there, but you don't need high speed internet up there. You need to be able to phone rescue services. But we have 4G up there and 3G. And I cool. think anyway. That, that actually really appeals to me who would like to be able to use the internet. In it's handy for locations. photographers though, if you're taking pictures of the fjords and then you can get a really fast onto your website. <laughs> you know, the flicker yeah. before anyone else. Yeah, and the awesome. might change until next year, you know. <laughs> so you have to publish it quickly. That's why you need your next note conference. Yes. In the, in, in, in the fjord. Yeah. I thought it was going to be Dubai. <laughs> No, if you're Dubai. Arab script. They <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> invented Arab script yesterday. I was there over lunch when you invented it. But this is almost first hand information. One of my friends, she actually does the software for the listening stations at Ericsson. She's my kind of dance friend. We dance a lot together. And she, well, she, she leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, she told lots of funny stories about that, but I shouldn't do all that then today. Uh, anyway, uh, when well, you get into that. Mm. Huh? Mm. Do you want to go up? Oh, anyway, go on. Peer to peer ethics then. Uh, as you guys know, terrorists on anonymous networks isn't a problem because there's so many other ways to uh, communicate anonymously. You can put, uh, write a letter, put it in a paper envelope, and put it on the uh, mailbox in the city center and don't write who it's from, and the government can know who's talking to who. Or you can publish in the newspaper, little or whatever. There's thousands of ways to do that. And people already know those ways, they're always old school. So terrorists on peer-to-peer -peer networks forget about that. That's not a real problem. But uh, pro child pornography might seem like a real problem. So I, I investigated that. I tried to meet with other engineers and people and discuss what's good and what's bad about these kinds of peer-to-peer -peer networks. Is the good better, more better than the bad parts? Is it, should I continue this research? <coughs> and finally, the, the group of people that works for the Swedish government and hunts pedophiles they heard about me asking around about this. So they contacted me and wanted a meeting. And that was, wow, these are the actual <laughs> pedophile uh, um, child pornography hunters for the government in Sweden. And the first thing they said after, they, they asked me to explain what I was doing building. And then they said, ah, OK, yeah. Yeah, freely available, anonymous child pornography would be a good thing. Like, what? And they started explaining. So I'll give you the same explanation. Uh, um, you know, people are surfing internet porn, well, normal internet porn, of course. And there's lots of studies that have been done on that, both in Europe and America. So this is a well-known fact about, about psychologists. Uh, guys that are surfing porn, porn don't have sex with their girlfriends as often, and their wives. They stop having sex. Because they just watch the porn and forget about their wife. And also guys that surf porn don't go out to bars to find women anymore. And that's, we have statistics on that. That's a, a fact, both in North America and Europe. That's a well-known fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so surfing porn means you have less sex. So porn is a contra is a contraceptive. No, not just <laughs> <laughs> no, just no, just a contraceptive. It also protects against the uh, disease. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those veneric, veneric. Yeah, it's yeah. contraceptive. Yeah. 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 Venereal diseases yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So in sweet, actually, in sweet, there's a direct correlation. I wonder if there's a direct correlation with like a decline in, in sexually transmitted diseases <laughs> with the increase in availability of pornography. Well, I haven't said it, <laughs> no, <laughs> but they at least studied a lot. In Sweden, uh, since we have a, a lot of convicted um, uh, pedophiles, not as bad as in America, because in Sweden you have actually be, to really do something bad to be convicted. Not in America, if you're 16 years and have a 15 years old girlfriend, you're a pedophile. That's ridiculous. Not, that doesn't work in Sweden. But we have some that have been convicted. And then they after, during their sentence and also afterwards they have a, their psychologists they go to and try to learn to live with this because they have figured out, there's also uh, a, a, a science fact known as if you are a pedophile, you're always a pedophile. It's like being gay or being bisexual or something else. That's, something you are and will be forever, unfortunately. Uh, I was a bit sad, sad to hear that, but apparently that's... So, so they actually have to learn to live with it and don't do it. 
But they realized, well, if normal people, when they serve pop, porn stuff, go out to get girls, does that work on pedophiles? So they actually gave some of these convicts when they released from prison, they gave them each one computer full with all the, uh, the child pornography that the Swedish police had, um, what do you call it? Confiscated. Confiscated. So that's about a million pictures, uh, hundreds of thousands of movies. So it was a full hard disk. But they didn't tell them why. They said, that, is this is a study. And then they had police, uh, 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 experienced police officers tracking them. What do you call when you follow them around? Stalking. Stalking. That's a crime. <laughs> like a private detective. Not your criminal business. And they noticed these guys stopped going out to the playgrounds. Mm -hmm. They stayed at home with their computer. <laughs> and they studied them for several months. And apparently, if, uh, if pedophiles get child pornography, they stop hunting kids. Uh, uh, again, exactly. <laughs> but unfortunately, it leaked out, so they had to stop the test. And another, uh, uh, another aspect that perhaps a bit more important is today, since for most users, it's slightly hard to find uh, child pornography. You guys know how to find it, because if you search the peer-to-peer -peer networks, even on non anonymous ones, you just stumble on it all the time. Mm -hmm. But m normal internet users, they don't know that. And some, some pe most pedophiles I've met on the anonymous networks, I chatted with someone, they, they learn how to do it, because they're so afraid, so they actually study how can I get it in a safe manner, mm -hmm. a secure manner. But, but some don't. So there are lots of websites in one like weird countries, that publish child pornography and you pay with your plastic card. Of course, there's a market because it's hard to get. There's a market. Mm -hmm. And there are several mafia organizations in Belgium, France, Spain, especially in Europe, and part of Eastern Europe, but that's a special concentration in Belgium and France, they told me. And also, if you've seen the news, that seems to be great. That kidnaps kids, make the movies, and then release the kid. That's business for them. And they publish that, they sell that to those websites. So if you have, and we know that from pornography industry and the movie industry, you know the movie and film industry, they say if everyone downloads for free, they won't buy our movies. And you know, we try to say, no, we will buy them anyway and spend more money buying them, but we know actually, yeah, of course, people will buy less movies if they can download them for free. So if they can download the child pornography for free from the anonymous network, <laughs> they won't go and spend money with a plastic card on those websites because all the Pretty much all the pedophiles know if they use the plastic card, of course they're traceable, you can trace the money. So they know that it's safer for them. But so the, the demand still creates the supply though. Um, so there has right. to be a supply in the first place. Yeah. Actually not. The amount of shell formula for that all have been published and available means that you can't consume that in a lifetime. You don't need, need to make any new. And, if you, um, and these mafia organizations in Belgium, for instance, they're not pedophiles themselves, they do it only to for mm -hmm. money. And if they can't sell it, they won't kidnap kids anymore. Yeah, I think but the strange thing is still is, at least in the UK, most of the high profile cases are where individuals have gone and abused yeah, of course. people. Yeah, and they're they're the they're children. children. Their children or teachers or whatever. Yeah. So but, I mean, I... Yeah, but high, still, high profile the, the is just what the media does. They have so. yeah. pornography at home, they will, don't, won't, won't actually do it as often. They will stay at home and use their pornography instead of trying yeah, to get I'm sorry, I just find this a bit iffy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course it's iffy, but I don't say this as an absolute fact. It's just what it seems like in recent research. And that means, so I, I can't say with certainty, but it seems like uh, Having freely available anonymous child pornography means they will go out less, it seems like that. It also seems like the guys that actually kidnap the kids and sell the movies that they make them uh, won't get as much a market and won't kidnap as much kids. So it seems like that at least. We don't know that as to, it's not a fact, but it seems like that from the research is safe. So, but for me at least it means it's probably a good thing to have an anonymous network. So the child pornography is probably not something we need to worry about. So that lifts the stone off my heart. So I hope that's true, of course. I, won't, I don't know if it's... We don't know. Let, in 20 years, perhaps, we have more studies and know better, but it seems like it's not a bad thing. It's still a sad thing, of course. And as we say in Sweden, uh, as kids are growing up and the, the, those pictures are cir circulating, of course it's a repeat crime because kid pictures are reused, but it's better than when the new kid is kid, kidnapped and abused once more. So, but, but at least just... Um, it's funny, but a weird thing that I stumbled on while I 
investigative ethics. So I say probably we shouldn't worry about uh, short